Hello InfoBerson, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries and some of the recent studies about near-Earth supernova that potentially happened millions of years ago and supernova that might have even caused extinction events in the past. And specifically we're going to focus on one of the recent studies by Alexis Quintana and a team from Spain that through the analysis of some of the largest and most massive stars in the vicinity of planet Earth were able to establish the overall frequency of these dangerous events and the potential chance for an extinction event caused by a powerful nearby supernova. And so let's talk about some of these studies you can find in the description, starting with some of the previous assumptions from previous studies we've discussed before. Now first of all this analysis is mostly based on type 2 supernova, or essentially the collapse of massive stars that then explode, usually leaving behind a neutron star or a black hole. And though obviously other supernovas such as type 1a supernova can also be pretty dangerous, here it's actually a lot more difficult to estimate their frequency, mostly because those supernova are caused by white dwarfs and detecting white dwarfs is a lot more difficult. But a typical type 2 supernova is caused by some of the most massive and some of the brightest stars, usually OB stars, and finding them is much much easier. And normally these types of supernova happen inside various star forming regions. Today we know of at least 12 such regions within approximately 2000 light years away from planet Earth. And there's only really a handful of various potential candidates that might one day explode in the next million years. At the moment there is no star that's going to be exploding anytime soon in the vicinity. And you can find out more about this in one of the previous videos about Betelgeuse in the description below. And well the most famous type 2 supernova ever is of course this, SN 1987A that happened in the Large Magellanic Cloud, which was basically the first time ever researchers were able to observe everything in pretty much real time. And based on the total emissions from this supernova, scientists created a lot of different models trying to understand the overall danger of these events, mostly focusing on the atmospheric modeling, and specifically in regards to gamma ray radiation coming from these explosions. And so based on the observations, we know that anything that's closer than 8 parsecs or 26 light years would very likely destroy half of the Earth's ozone layer, which could possibly lead to a major disaster. All of these gamma rays will actually induce a cascade of chemical reactions in the upper atmosphere that will then turn a lot of nitrogen and oxygen into things like nitrogen oxide that's then going to eat up the ozone layer and also very likely cause a lot of cooling effects, which today scientists believe would dramatically change the climate on the planet, basically disrupting the food chain. And intriguingly, when looking at the geological record, and specifically the record showing us various extinction events, two of the five largest mass extinction events could have potentially been caused by something very very similar. For example, the late Devonian event that happened 372 to 359 million years ago seems to have wiped out approximately 80% of all marine species, and seems to have lasted for a very long time, involving dramatic shifts in the oceans, including the drop in oxygen, and the cooling of the climate. And here a nearby supernova is one of the potential explanations. Although obviously there are some other explanations such as an impact event, volcanism, or possibly even dramatic evolution on the surface of the planet involving plants and fungi, which would have then affected the composition of the atmosphere and eventually caused a change. Likewise during the late Ordovician period, approximately 445 million years ago, 85% of marine species also disappeared. And here this was actually caused by a shift in climate when Earth turned from the greenhouse to an ice house, with the oceans eventually being depleted of oxygen and then causing the extinction. Now here volcanism and asteroids could once again explain some of this, but one of the main explanations is still a supernova or maybe a gamma ray burst, which technically would be a supernova too. But at the moment there's not enough evidence to prove any of this, mostly because we don't really have any sediments pointing at an exact culprit. And because this was such a long time ago, there is no way we can even find a remnant neutron star or a black hole, because by now it would be completely inactive. But in this recent study, researchers decided to just do an analysis of known stars around us, and of course what we know about their supernova, in order to find out the approximate chance for one such event to happen in the next billion years or so. And so by collecting a very large sample of 24,706 O and B type stars, within about 1 kiloparsec or 3200 light years away from planet Earth, 
The research is focused on first understanding how star clusters and galaxies form, but also trying to figure out the overall rate of type 2 supernova explosions. And all of these stars are very massive and very hot, and typically only survive for a few million years. They're also very often found in OB associations, or basically groups of young stars inside various molecular clouds. For example, the nearest such association is known as Scorpius Centaurus. You can kind of see it right there, and it's approximately 400 light years away from us. And so first of all, here researchers tried to estimate their age, but then they also used the overall gas density in the galaxy in order to find out how efficient the Milky Way is at converting all of this dust and gas into these powerful stars. Mostly because this is a process that's been going on for a very long time, and this is also obviously the main source for a lot of these type 2 supernova. In the end, determining that for a near-Earth supernova to occur, we would obviously have to wait for a pretty long time, approximately 250 million years. Or, just to rephrase this, they suggest there are approximately 4 near-Earth supernova every billion years. And so having two of these supernova cause an extinction event would not be impossible. Now obviously here we have no idea which of these events was caused by a supernova, but statistically speaking, at least two of them could have happened in the last 500 million years. Although the assumption here is that the distance to the star in this case would be at least 50 light years away from planet Earth. Because anything farther than that is unlikely to be dangerous. As I mentioned before, currently there are no supernova candidates anywhere within about 500 light years, so technically we're still safe. But obviously a supernova does not have to be too close in order to produce some effect, not necessarily an extinction event. And that's because on average we do actually expect way more supernova that can have an effect on a much smaller geological scale. For example here within about 1000 light years from planet Earth, we expect approximately 20 supernova within the last 10 million years. And some of these events could have been powerful enough to not just produce radiation, but also distribute a lot of material across the galaxy, with some of it eventually ending up on our planet, and maybe even producing some minor chemical reactions, both in the atmosphere and in the ocean. And so, for example, even a much farther supernova can actually produce a lot of fast-moving particles, or cosmic rays, that can technically influence the environment for hundreds and even thousands of years, slowly affecting the atmosphere of the planet or cause a long-term increase in a lot of nitrogen-based molecules, which can once again cool the climate and even have a direct impact on life on the planet through a slight increase in the overall radiation reaching the surface. And we actually do have quite a lot of geological records suggesting something similar happened millions of years ago. Now, in some of the previous videos in the description, we talked about some signs of potential nearby supernova from about 2.5 million years ago and from 6 million years ago. This was based on the discovery of radioactive atoms on the seafloor, with a sediment containing things like iron-60, which would be difficult to explain unless it came from a super powerful event. But interestingly, in this case, these much farther supernova could maybe have an opposite effect. Not an extinction, but instead a speciation event. Or basically, they might increase the amount of mutations and even accelerate evolution, while also changing the temperature differences on the planet which can then increase ocean mixing and the overall transport of nutrients across the oceans, thus leading to greater biodiversity. So basically here, when it comes to farther supernova, their exact effects are still not clear. And so in the last few years, a lot of different researchers kept discovering signs of these somewhat recent supernova in a lot of different sediment, with a lot of radioactive iron and some other metals, suggesting that something did happen approximately 3 million years ago, possibly 6 million years ago, and maybe even 8 million years ago, basically implying that this is a lot more frequent than we thought and possibly affects the planet in some ways. But I guess what's even more intriguing, in some of the recent studies, scientists have also discovered plutonium, and in this case it potentially came from a sample that seems to be about 10 million years old. And here the discovery of plutonium very likely implies one thing, a kilonova, a collision between nearby neutron stars that creates an extremely powerful explosion and a cascade producing a lot of heavy elements, including plutonium and things like, for example, gold and platinum. And so the first discovery of radioactive isotope of plutonium in 2021 implied that these events possibly happen much more frequently than we thought, and of course not that far from our planet. But there is a bit of a problem. The problem being that a lot of this research is actually done with oceanic samples. And by analyzing samples from the ocean, 
we do actually have too much uncertainty. Mostly because ocean water and sediment always circulates around, and so it is kind of difficult to establish exactly when things happen. And so here, because of the ocean currents, it's difficult to establish the timeline. But the same researchers do actually have one hope, and that hope is the moon. Assuming that the Artemis mission happens, and assuming we go back to the moon and start bringing back a lot of samples, there is a very high chance that a lot of these lunar samples will contain pristine materials deposited over billions of years. Which basically implies that we might actually have a chance to understand exactly what happened to planet Earth in terms of these kilonova by analyzing these fresh samples coming from the moon. And so lunar research might resolve a lot of these mysteries and provide an extremely accurate timeline of a lot of these events, helping us resolve a lot of questions about extinction events, but also some other major events in the Earth's history that we still cannot explain. For example, the idea behind the beginning of the Ice Ages 2.6 million years ago that we've discussed previously in the video in the description is still not super clear. And so here the samples from the moon could maybe provide some answers. But I guess until these future studies and until these future discoveries, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves to know about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.